Hey, my Taroskians, what's going on? I've been a pretty busy guy lately, and um, I just wanted to give you a little up-to-date. Uh, it's been summer break for the boys, for my children, so they've been around the house and been kind of crazy, haven't given them much time to film or anything like that. So I decided to kind of keep you guys updated on a quick few pickups and some games I've been playing, things like that, just to catch up. Hope you guys have been great. Uh, let's start off with something kind of neat. Uh, this is Tecmo Bowl for the Nintendo. You can see a uh, monkey is just laying around here. We're going to use them right here to... There we go. So, Tecmo Bowl, kind of cool story. I already have Super Tecmo Bowl. And basically, I got this. A uh, buddy of mine hooked me up with a spare NES that he had. And I kind of used that as a trade for other goodies that I'll show you a little bit later. And this game was inside of it. And I didn't have the original Tecmo Bowl. I had Super Tecmo Bowl. And this game is fantastic. It's uh, it's really, it's a really amazing how fluid of a football game you're getting, uh, considering how old this game is. This was really, really cool. Uh, the teams are not real. They have some weird made-up team names, and I think the players are legit, but the team names are not. I don't think they had the NFL license just yet. They got it later for Super Tech Mobile. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. But yeah, neat. Gra glad to have this. Uh, next up we have. A game that I just needed to get myself. This is Stellar Blade for the PS5. Um, Stellar Blade, and it's not in the case right now because I am almost done beating it. I think I'm on the last area. You know, at first I was kind of like, um, I, I really wanted this game for quite a bit. And it was just, just, I'm getting bombarded with so many good games as you'll see later on. And I still have some on my wish list. Dragon's Dogma 2 mainly. But... Um, I really needed this one. I picked it up finally after putting it off for a while. And at first I was really lukewarm on the game. It really wasn't doing anything new for me. The combat was just whatever. I felt like the main character Eve here, um, was just kind of stilted in her movements and very lethargic. She's supposed to be this lim limber, like super light of uh, acrobatic fighter. And she wasn't just doing it for me. And then eventually as you unlock more abilities and get down control of the parrying and all that stuff and counters and dodges and you even get a gun weapon later on things like that it really opens up the combat and the story for me which a lot of people have been critiquing um it's actually pretty solid you see the turn coming as it's building up and uh but it's still neat it's nice i'm gonna see how the story ends see if my opinions change um couple of negatives about it. I don't like the platforming. I feel like it's kind of shoehorned in there at some points. And, and it's just not very intuitive for platforming. The combat's excellent, though. And the upgrade system is fantastic. Um, for those of you wondering about, like, can I play this around my family? I would say if you're going to dress up uh, the main character, Eve, there's a bunch of outfits as a stripper, then no. Because, uh, yeah, it leaves little to the imagination. But who cares? Uh, I would... Um, Say, just dress her up uh, regular around your family and you're all good to go. But anyways, the game is fantastic and I'm really impressed by what Shift Up has done. Um, my brother recommended to play it with the Korean voice dubs and that's what works best. I think it sounds great. He said that in English, they're extremely annoying and the voice acting could have done a lot better. But yeah, I really like Stellar Blade. I, if there's a sequel ever, I'm definitely picking it up. I really, really enjoy this game. And I'm looking forward to beating it soon. So yeah, Stellar Blade, fantastic. Uh, next up, GameStop has had really cool deals once again. And um, they have a buy to get one used. So uh, I believe Seabass, Gnarly Seabass has a copy of this as well, of uh, Hogwarts Legacy. And I picked up this copy used. I think I'm missing a manual or pamphlet. I am not a Harry Potter person by any stretch of the imagination. I think most people that buy this game that are gamers kind of pick it up almost for someone else that likes Harry Potter. My son, my oldest, loves Harry Potter. He's all about the books, about the movies, and now he's playing this game. It's his first big boy game, upgrading from Minecraft and, you know, Goat Simulator to a real open world with quests and things. So I was more than happy to get him a game that would interest him and kind of introduce him to these bigger AAA type games. And it looks like a fun time. I mean, I, I never read the books. I've never read any of anything to do with the franchise. I've never really seen the movies. I've seen them in passing when they're on at home, when the kids are watching them. 
It looks interesting. I just never got into it. Goosebumps was my thing. But the game received great accolades, and it's supposed to be really fantastic. And my son just loves having it. Every night he just asks, can I play tonight? Can I play tonight? So he's really enjoying it. Now, the other two games that I got um, were Stray is the first one, the Kitty Cat game. Um, I already beat the Kitty Cat game, actually. And it was cool. It still had the postcards and everything, so that's neat. I love it when GameStop manages to scrap together like the pre-order bonuses i don't know if this was a pre-order bonus but it has these uh postcards in there that are never going to get mailed anywhere the cat there on the disc uh this is a fantastic little game it took about six hours to beat um you're basically a cat you have a designated button to meow and you're helping out it's a post-apocalyptic scenario that seems to be the norm for everything now including stellar blade it kind of feeds into Cellar Blade, actually, in a way, in my mind. They, they could almost be in the same universe. You know, it's dilapidated, future cities, humanity is basically almost extinct. In Stray, they, they basically are. I'm not going to delve deeper to avoid spoilers in anything, but this is a really great game. You go around helping all these robots with these quests, and it's a cool little story. There's no real, too much combat to speak of, it's just a lot of platforming, and the ambiance and the story building is what you're going for here for such a quick playthrough. My kids really enjoyed this one also, watching me play through this. This is a very cool game that I've been kind of had my eyes on for a while. And then finally, when I saw it at a decent price with the GameStop deal, I just had to jump on it. So yes, Stray. Very cool. And the last game that I picked up on part of the deal was one that I've been really keeping eyes out for a while. It's Cuphead for the PS4. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that the PS4 version has all the DLC baked onto the disc. Um... This game is also, right now, in the PS4. It's kicking my ass. And once again, GameStop pulls through with these little, like, uh, cardboard comics and a little members club card or something like that. Membership card, yeah. To the Studio MDHR Inkwell Isles. So, pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, I like this. This is... It's a really hard game. I thought it was just a shooter, but it's... I'd say a shooter and a shoot 'em up run and gun sections, and I love the art style. Nothing really replicates something like this. Um, it's a lot of fun to play Cuphead. I'm really, really enjoying myself, but it's really, really difficult. There's been some uh, hair pulling moments where I just get really frustrated with the game because it's just. But it's what's great about it is you're dying at no fault of the game, but it's your own lack of skill that does it. The game is never cheap. The enemy placement can be a little cheap, but the game itself, when you lose, you know you lost because you sucked or you messed up. But um, it's a really cool game. Uh, my my two boys are also big fans of, of Cuphead, and my daughter kind of is too, sort of, mainly because it's a cartoon. But yeah, it's a fun game, and I'm really excited. That kind of rounds out the three uh, GameStop games. And next up, we'll go and see what Father's Day brought us. I mean, I hope you guys had a fantastic Father's Day. I'm going to start it up with Unicorn Overlord on the PS5. Um, Unicorn Overlord, I've already beaten. It took about uh, 94, 95 hours, a massive Atlas strategy RPG. And I'm going to say, while every this game has been getting fantastic reviews everywhere, the reviews don't do it justice. This... Even though the reviews have touted it to being such a fantastic game, it still gets my Hidden Gem nomination, I believe. There are lots of good games here. Stray was really surprised me also. And Stellar Blade did to a degree, even though I knew that game was supposed to be good coming in. But Unicorn Overlord blew me away. Um, the art style is typical Vanillaware goodness. And the combat is fantastic. It kind of uh, a warning for some of you. When you engage in combat, it kind of auto-battles your, your combatants against the enemies. But what matters is how you set up their abilities and their weapons and micromanage their stats and their skills to be a fantastic fighting force. Uh, there's over maybe around 60 plus characters that you can recruit and they're all unique besides the ones that you can, you know, draft from fortresses and kind of almost create a character out of generic soldiers. But this game um, creates these really awesome characters with great back little stories and they are all so unique and certain units just mesh better with others not just 
in the way they get along, but also in the way their abilities um, kind of mesh in combat. Like, for instance, you'll have some support units in your back row that have a special warding ability to protect the front row units from, like, you know, one attack from, like, let's say, archers. And then those, those units in the front are protected for that one attack, and then they can unleash their own attacks, last a little bit longer in the fight. Um, there's action points and skill points and active points. It's really a fantastic game. Um, my only wish is that on the overworld map, things would have been a little bit more detailed, especially your little character sprite as he trots the globe. But this is an amazing game. Unicorn Overlord get, definitely gets my secret, uh, not secret, my hidden gem recommendation. This is a fantastic game. If you're slightly on the fence, slightly intrigued, look up a, a video or two, see if you like the combat. And once you probably do like it and you like micromanaging your units and kind of being this master of war and these grand scale epic fights, go for it. Uh, fantastic. Amazing game. The last game I got for Father's Day, I haven't even cracked open yet, but it is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Defy Destiny together. I am uh, very excited to check this game out. Um, the first part of the remake, I think, was more exciting in a way because it's kind of like, oh man, you know, Cloud and the gang are back. So since, you know, I've been a big fan of the original Final Fantasy VII when it came out in 97, maybe? I could be wrong, whatever it is. But this game I'm still excited for, and I noticed a disturbing trend in the PlayStation 4 uh, Final Fantasy VII remake, the first part. The price just skyrocketed out of nowhere. And I got the collector's edition because I was all about it, so I got the big box, and that one's still very pricey. And then I, this game started getting pricey, too. I started looking up places to buy it. I wanted to get the collector's edition because I'm a big fan, but it was just not worth it anymore. The prices are blowing up too, way too high. They're already axing... You know, $69.99 for a brand new game. They're out of their minds, you know? So, it, it, but whatever. The point is, I'm really looking forward to checking this game out. Um, it's probably going to be the next game I definitely dive into right after I beat Stellar Blade, which should be pretty soon, maybe in the next couple of days. And yeah, I noticed that on top of the game is not only being expensive, but it seems like games spend a lot of less time, a shorter amount of time in your local game stops or game stores before they're removed. Like... You used to be able to go into a Toys R Us and pick up a copy of a game that was three or four years old because they still had a stock of it. Now, at least from my memory as a child, nowadays it's kind of like, hey, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. It released somewhat recently, you know, and I can't find a copy almost anywhere. And the same thing with um, Unicorn Overlord. I think I bought a copy and then it just sold out at my GameStop. Maybe my GameStop just sucks, but I, I see it. Quantities of physical media are definitely becoming a lot more scarce, and I feel kind of had a little bit of a FOMO moment, uh, needed to snag this as quick as possible. I heard this is a massive 100 plus hour RPG. I'm looking forward to it, uh, but after beating Unicorn Overlord and Stellar Blade, which is going to probably come into around 40 hours, I might ease off into something a little bit slower. But anyways, yeah, Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth, really excited. I might want to get uh, Crisis Core also, the remake of the PSP game. Um, starring Zach Fair here to get more backstory into one of my favorite iterations or favorite entries in the Final Fantasy series. And finally, I traded away some goodies, including that Nintendo and some other things, to a buddy of mine to get four games. Um, uh, you know, collector alert for the first one. I'm going to show you. It's very ugly. Don't don't throw rocks at me. This really nasty copy of Song of the Deep for PS4. Um, this is supposedly like an underwater Metroidvania. The original case that I got it in had like someone had pushed it angrily and punched it and cracked the case itself and punctured the art even. So I got it a slightly better case, which is not much better. I'm definitely on the hunt for a replacement PS4 case, but I kind of wanted to check this game out. This was kind of like the last game I kind of threw into the deal to make the deal work with me and my buddy to kind of make it worth my while. Even though this... Um, this is really gross. This is really uh, uh, grimy. But the other stuff I got is fantastic. I'll start off three more games. One is eh, but it's very interesting. And the next two are awesome. I'm excited. First up is Yanya Kabbalista, City Skater or Kabbalista. This game um, is interesting. I am missing the manual, and this is a blue bottom. So I remember a long time ago hearing this this name and thought that's a weird name. Um, 
it kind of reminds me of Jet Set Radio, but with skateboards. It has this uh, cell shaded but anime style, and you do tricks. But now here's the kicker, and I didn't notice this until after I picked up the game. Um, and I kind of wish I hadn't picked this game, this particular copy up, because I'm not. I'm, I mean, not no super regrets, but still. It came with a specialized controller, apparently, like a little tech deck board you put over your analog sticks, held your controller sideways, and controlled it, the skateboard, by moving the sticks together in unison with the with the um, the tech deck over the boards, over the um, analog sticks. And I think you could click them in to do kick flips and weird stuff like that. The story mode is supposedly kind of fun. This is uh, like kind of like a cult classic, maybe. And so now I'm on... the. You know, you cannot find that tech deck board that came with this game. It's not just any regular tech deck. You know, it, it has like little cups apparently that fit over the analog sticks to make it sit nicely. So now I'm looking for a complete copy. Because you can't find a little tech deck board on its own on eBay. I already looked. If you guys have one, let me know or send me a link to one because I would love to get it. I really want to try it. There are controls, control options to play conventional controllers, but that's no fun. I think the whole point of this is to use the little tech deck. That that sounds amazing. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's kind of neat. Uh, not a rare, super rare game. And not an expensive game either. But I think finding one complete with that little tech deck board, that's that's the tough part. But anyways, yeah, Yanya Kabbalista. We played it very briefly, very hard. I held the controller sideways and everything and tried to move the sticks together. It was very, very difficult. But yeah, I'm excited to maybe one day snag a complete copy or find that little board. Two more games, and they're really cool. The first one is Bushido Blade 2 from Squaresoft. It, the uh, copy needed some cleaning, and um, it also needed um, a brand new front because this had a nasty... The hinges were broken on, on top and bottom, so it was just there. But this game... As I recall, I borrowed it from a friend back in middle school, or on the tail end of middle school, along with Mega Man 2. And I had a blast with both the games. I bought Mega Man 2 a long time ago, like over a decade ago. Maybe back when I was in college, in the GameStop bin for like five bucks. Now that game is super expensive. But this game um, is a somewhat pricey PS1 game, and it's an awesome one-on-one -on -one sword fighting game where there is no life bar. There is just the one sudden strike that'll get you death. So, really neat. Uh, there's some voice acting that's really cheesy and hokey. I really like it. Uh, unlocking characters is tricky. You'll, you'll play through the whole game, and then you get to a middle stage where you get in control of a new character for a brief moment. You have to make it through the stage as that character. That character has to survive, and then you unlock them at the end of the playthrough. Now, since there are one-hit deaths, if you get hit and you lose that character during that, your whole playthrough is basically done. You might as well restart if you wanted to unlock that guy or girl. Because they're dead. End of story. But yeah. Bushido Blade 2 is super neat. And I think Gnarly Sivas has a copy of this. This is a fun game to play with friends. Kind of just link up and start slashing at each other. And do all sorts of wacky stuff. But yeah. Fantastic little game. I've uh, been on my list for a long time. I kind of well, added recently. But I remember having lots of fond memories of this game back in uh, middle school. So, really cool. Bushido Blade 2. And finally, let's move on over to the... It's not a super big pickup, but I've been really excited for it. Alien Hominid for the PS2. This was the last game I got in that trade. Um, clean copy. Complete. And uh, the disc does need a resurface, though, because it has one scratch in particular that makes the in intro video skip a little, which, you know... Shouldn't be, that bothers me. So, I'm going to get it resurfaced carefully. Um, soon, hopefully. But, yeah, I've been looking for this one for a while. This is a run-and-gun, one or two player, kind of like Contra, but a lot harder, in my opinion. With, like, hand-drawn uh, graphics. And it's based on, if you guys remember, the old Newgrounds uh, cartoons. Like, um, like uh, I think it's Gate, Gate Smashers, King, King Smash. What was that game with the Knights? I don't even know. Whatever. The point is... It's from the same people from the Behemoth, I believe is the same guy for Castle Crashers. That's what it was. And this little character, I remember him in a lot of games. But 
yeah, Alien Hominid is a really, really difficult game. It gives you a ton of lives and continues, but it still really gives you a hell of a time trying to complete it. Um, anyways, guys, that's it for my pickups. What have you guys been buying? What have you guys been picking up? Um, I'll tell you what other things I've been up to. I have also been kind of um, beating a lot of games. Cellar Blade is my latest victim pretty soon. But um, I've also beaten Sea of Stars since the last we, last we talked. This was amazing, an amazing game. Um, what else have I beaten? I've beaten a Valkyrie, Valkyrie Elysium, which is not really close to me right now, but it's over that way somewhere. Um, if you like Chrono Trigger, this is really the new iteration. This is this new generation's Chrono Trigger. This is a fantastic game with the retro style. It's, it's phenomenal. Beaten a lot of games. Um, one thing that I've noticed that kind of bothers me, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but what's up with um, all these new games having really lame spines? What's up with this? What, what, what's going on here? Why are we why are we boring? Why are we boring? You know, I kind of hate watching PS2 collection videos from when they're from the uh, UK or the PAL regions because all the PS2 spines look exactly like this with blue cases and it makes it me want to go to sleep. I don't like this. This is a gripe. This is a gripe of mine. I like you know, when your spines are funky, look like that. Anyways. Anyways, guys. That's kind of it. Um wanted to see what you guys were up to thank you for catching up with me and i appreciate your viewership uh, i have videos planned out some reviews leave me any requests in the comments below and i hope to catch you guys next time on the churrasco voltor gaming channel see ya